This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I wanted to do in this video is do a follow up to the previous video we made um, where I showed you some of my board game collection, right? And in that video, I showed you one full uh, chessboard uh, that I have, the portable one, where sort of a uh, tarp type of material where it's, uh, it's not flat board, it's loose, where you can lay it down on flat surface and play chess, where you can go picnicking or to the beach or to the park or something like this. And uh, another chessboard or some of the pieces that I showed you is um, the chessboard basically uh, that we had since I was a kid, the wooden ones that's not complete. And I found some additional pieces actually going through some boxes and grabbing this board here. And uh, while making that video um, where I was showing the board game collection, I mentioned that I had another chessboard that I had bought a long time ago. And when it finally made its way to our new location, I was going to show it to you. And this is the board right here. And I wanted to show you this board um, because I do want to crack it open and take a look at it again. And uh, this is a chessboard that I bought back in the 1980s when I was in high school. And I sort of bought it for the family. And um, after, after getting it, we sort of had a little location in the corner of the house where uh, we set it up and it was permanently set up there. So anyone that wanted to play chess, you just say, hey, let's go play chess. And you go sit down and play chess, right? And it's sort of, as you can tell, it's sort of got a lot of tape on it. It's moved with us a few times and it's found my, itself to me uh, in this new location. And I'm going to try to set it up somewhere uh, for a permanent basis and uh, hopefully find someone that I can play uh, regular games with, right? Because chess is something that I played a lot when I was younger, but um, I haven't had the opportunity to play it as often as I did when I was younger as an adult because um, I found, I guess, less and less people play it as I get older. Um, and I sort of geared myself towards backgammon. So I play a lot of backgammon. Uh, so backgammon uh, and chess are two games that I played a lot, I grew up with basically, uh, that have been a huge part of my life. And we sort of made a video where I showed you my grandmother's backgammon board and um, we recorded basically six games, six rounds really, not six games, but six rounds, best of five of me and my grandmother playing backgammon. And at some point we're gonna go back and collect all the data that we had uh, for those dice rolls and create a series on uh, how to play craps, right? So that's the ultimate ultimate goal of that that whole set that we did other than showing you my grandmother's backgammon board and backgammon, backgammon how we played it, right? And this is sort of the, I guess, sibling to that board, to that game, which is chess, which I grew up with, okay? So let's sort of crack this open and that's sort of a quick intro to this video. And for those of you um, into comic books that, uh, that have been following my comic book um, videos, this is actually a box cutter uh, from Valiant, this Bloodshot Reborn promo box cutter that they sent out to retailers. And uh, they sent a whole bunch to one of the local comic shops I go to. And, uh, you know, they gave me a couple of these, uh, actually three of these, three or four of these. So I've been using it uh, in my move, cutting out boxes and organizing things. And I can't remember where the top for this went, okay? And this is, uh, this is the board. Let me throw this guy over here. And put this guy, we don't need this guy anymore. And here's the, take a look at this. Here's the table for it. This beautiful marble board. It's really heavy, actually. So I'm gonna put it down the table again. Uh, and as I, as I said, I bought this in the, in the 1980s when I was in high school for the family. And as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. It cost me a pretty penny back then. Um, but it was well worth the purchase. So what I'm gonna do, I got a, another stand set up here. So I'm gonna move this guy over here. Grab the board. Ah, here it is, right? Take a look at this. Beautiful, thick, fantastic. 
plastic piece and it's got sort of this soft stuff so it doesn't scratch up the surface and do damage to it right beautiful board let's put this down and when it comes to chess you never really or i never have um put the chessboard where the table is overhanging right because some of the pieces might fall and break it but for this um to make this video let's do it on this because it's the right height uh table here to give you guys a good view of this that's pretty clean i cleaned it before i packaged it right so it's not bad and let me show you the pieces and this is classic um classic chess right it's got black and white right and these are the pawns for it okay and as far as i'm concerned chess uh, or board games in general i think i mentioned this in previous video um it should be part of every education system should be part of every curriculum um so what we're gonna do let's do um let's set up the white pieces here and the black pieces here okay and again the, they're all a little different right take a look at this this one on this side has got a little bit yellowish tint and this one's pure white uh, so this guy might have uh, some ferrometallic some some minerals in it that possibly rust i'm not sure what's giving the, that was not that bad um for this piece let me show you actually let me show you what this looks like the pieces how they're organized here right i'll put those ones out that's okay take a look this is how the pieces are laid out and the board was sitting on top of it right black and white so let's lay down the pawns the white pieces and these guys have the red so chess definitely uh, chess and backgammon uh, in my opinion uh, they should be part of every curricular system uh, may it be centralized may it be community uh, local may it be homeschoolers um, because there are people who are homeschooling uh, decided a homeschooling option for the kids uh, for their family um, and you know people get together when they're homeschooling their kids and they homeschool in groups right and uh, if I was doing something like that if I was organizing something like that 100% I would include chess and backgammon as two of the games that the kids would be playing because chess is a game that's really about this is the rook really about patterns right because what you end up doing is you learn how um, and this is the knight and this guy is a little bit darker than than the other pieces the two the two knights that we have here are sort of a darker color than the rest of the pieces here and the two knights for the black pieces are a little bit different here let me show you contrast between these since we have it up here since we're talking about this take a look right so the night here and the night here they're a little bit different and not as for the black it's not as dark as the uh, as the other pieces and for the white it's got sort of a yellowish tint relative to that one so they stand out the nights in this board okay and um uh, sort of for chess the way it works is um when you learn how to play it uh, you sort of learn the movement types of each piece right so you got the bishop you got the knight you got the rook and here's the queen and we got the king here take a look here's the king 
Look at the stripe going up the king head. And I put the knight and the king together, so you see them together. Give you a good contrast. Take a look. Beautiful. Oops. Fluff and whatnot hanging about. So in chess, you sort of learn the movement type of each of the each of the pieces, right? The pawns for the black. Let me give you a contrast of the pawns for the black and the and the white. Take a look. So you learn the movement type of each of the pieces, right? And then once you sort of, I don't know if you say master, once you get a handle of how each of the individual pieces move, what you end up doing is uh, learning how to put combinations together, right? And that's really what chess is about for me anyway. And I'm not a, I'm a chess connoisseur. I'm not an expert in chess. I played a lot of it and, and to, in my, in my, I guess, uh, single digit years when I was a really small kid, all the way up to the early 20s, I was playing a fair bit of chess. Uh, but basically chess for me was, uh, the way I learned, learned about it was basically learn how each piece moves and then put combinations together. And as you play more and more, the combinations that you're able to do become a little bit more complicated. And while you're managing your combinations, trying to, you know, it's almost like boxing, right? You're trying to put combos together. You put your combinations together. You're trying to watch out for the other person putting their combinations together. So it's a very intricate game. And I guess the juice is flowing for the brain, right? Where you're looking at patterns, trying to maneuver, sort of a dance going on between two people that are playing the game, right? Well, on the other hand, um, um, backgammon which is in large part very different than chess backgammon does teach you a certain amount of pattern but because there is a certain amount of luck involved in backgammon backgammon is more about probability and statistics so it's an amazing game to teach you probability and statistics uh, with a little bit of the patterns that you notice are very shallow they're not very deep but with chess what you're doing is you're putting very intricate patterns together, right? And very minimal, like chance in, in chess that really doesn't exist other than your opponent making a mistake, right? So chess is all about depth of the patterns that you're gonna go into, how many moves ahead you're thinking. And backgammon is more being on your toes and dealing with probably the statistics and a lot of chance coming into game right but they're both brilliant because a very good backgammon player will always beat a okay backgammon player and a very good chess player will always beat an okay chess player okay so they both take a certain amount of skill right very much so very much so here's the rook for the black and here's the knight for the black that i love this one it's like spotted it's brilliant piece it's a little bit different than it's more pronounced the uh, the spots of this one relative to the spots of the the other one right this is the more spotty one okay and here's let me put the rook beside it so you see the contrast in color right So the knights in uh, in this board are very uh, are sort of different tone than the knights in uh, than the other pieces, right? Cool. Let's put these guys here. Here's the other bishop, knight, and take a look at the king and queen. And here's the king and queen for. The black piece. Awesome. Look at the 
this one. It's got a little bit of, ah, oh, not too much. Here's the king. Okay. We played a lot of games on this. Uh, it wasn't a traveling one, so definitely anyone that came to our house, we would sit down and play. And let me show you, um, since we got this set up, let me show you uh, the combination, the first combination that I ever learned, right, as a kid. And as a kid, I remember, um, you know, we were taught this early on. So initially you learned that, you know, the pawn can move two, two, two squares or one square in the first move, right? And the bishop can move diagonally. And we used to call the bishop monkey. I don't know if that's something that's done in slang or not, or something that we just did. Uh, the knight sort of moves in L pattern. Uh, oops, from here to here, right? Moves in an L pattern. The bishop moves either diagonally or vertically or horizontally, right? Like this. And the queen can move, you know, mimic all, all movements from, you know, all the other pieces. And the king is almost pretty useless. It only moves one place at a time, right? So after uh, I learned how to play chess, right? After I learned how to master, not master, but well enough to know how each piece moved, we were, we were taught combinations. And the first combination I ever learned is the one that stuck with me because it's probably the easiest combination. And it was something that we constantly tried to do because as soon as we learned it, we were like, wow, what? that's just amazing. You know, I wonder if anybody else knows this. So we would always try it on opponents. And sometimes people will forget that this move, it was so easy to do. And it takes four moves to checkmate the other person, okay? Um, so let me show you this thing. So basically in chess, usually the white goes first, as far as I know anyway, or that's the way we usually play it. So the white goes first. And to do this move, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I'm gonna show you two variations of it. One of them is in four moves, you get a checkmate. And the other one is in five moves, you get a checkmate. And then basically the goal of the game is to, for the, black if they want to checkmate the white is to get the queen here right as long as the king hasn't moved and as long as these two pieces haven't moved the queen and the pawn here haven't moved and this queen has backup has support then this becomes checkmate because the king can't go anywhere this guy could be moved this guy could be moved and it would still become checkmate as long as the queen is doing the final attack on the king right so basically the way it works is this the white gets to go first right if you happen to be the white so a general move a generic move very simple move is to bring the pawn here and the black would mimic the white and it would bring the pawn here because that's the center line right and then the white let's assume was brought the pawn here to protect this guy, okay? Now, what you could do with the queen is put your queen here because it has access to this spot here, or you could put your queen here because it has your access to this spot here. If you bring your queen here, the automatic response from the white is to do this because you've crossed over the halfway line and you're threatening their territory and queen is powerful. So you sort of want to shoot them away, or we used to anyway. So in general, the movement that we used to do was to put the queen here, okay? Now this is two moves. White has moved two, black has moved two. Now let's assume the white doesn't know that this move exists, that if the queen comes here, then it has the possibility of checkmating the king if the queen has backup, right? So it's white's turn, and let's assume the white doesn't know this is gonna happen or doesn't see it coming. Let's say they move their pawn up here. What the black would do now is move the bishop here, okay? Now, once this guy's here, the black is only one move away from checkmating 
the white. If the white doesn't see this coming, right? Hasn't taken any precautions. The white can't take precautions, right? The white could do this. Block the bishop here. The white could do what else? Could do this. Block the queen's access here, right? The white could simply just move this guy up here, right? And the queen can't get there. It does risk losing the knight, right? So there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. They could even move the queen here, protect the spot, give it back up, okay? But let's assume the white doesn't see this and does another move. Let's say they bring the knight here. They want to bring it into game, into play. In the next move, the black queen can take that. And the king, the only two places it can go is to can go here, which is still check. It can go here, which is still check. It can't take out the queen. It can't eat the queen because the queen's got back up, right? And there's no other pieces to take out the queen, so this becomes checkmate. And this was the first move that I ever learned, right? And it blew me away when I first learned that. It was like all of a sudden the realization that it's not just one piece you're thinking about. You're thinking about putting combos together, right? And once we learn this, we tried to do this every time at the beginning, right? I would try it and whoever else I was playing against, if they were a kid, if they had learned this game, they would try it, right? Now the variation of this is this. Let's take these bad guys back, okay? Let's stick it with the two. Uh, let's say two moves have occurred with the white and two moves have occurred with the black. So it's white's turn to move, right? Now let's assume the white goes here again. So it's trying to build, you know, sort of an intricate little maze within its zone, right? But instead of moving this guy here, I could do the attack with the knight. I could go there. Now this is not protecting. It's not, doesn't have reach over here yet, like the bishop did in the first move, right? So this version takes five moves because my knight has to come here to give access to this okay so let's assume the white still doesn't know what's going on and decides to well let's bring their knight into play right what could happen now is this guy goes here now again the black is one move away from checkmating the white right all the black has to do is take this out this guy out right bring the queen here now the white if they don't see this and they're worried about this guy let's say they do this they bring the pawn forward to shoo the knight away right then the black the queen can take that guy out right position herself here and again the king is there's a check move that's check that's check the white can't take out the queen. It can take out the knight, but it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't have a move, so it's checkmate again. Another variation of this is you can bring the knight here, and you're both, you're giving the white the option to either save the queen or save the, the rook, right? And this is sort of the first two combinations, first two patterns that I learned when I played chess. And I believe I went up to like, seven or eight deep patterns but i don't i don't remember them anymore right i haven't played uh this kind of you know heavy chess game for a very very long time as i mentioned i've been focused on uh playing other games board games maybe access analyze diplomacy backgammon a lot and a lot of computer games as well right so chess sort of took a back seat to the rest but when i was growing up this thing was absolutely brilliant it it really was an, you know, fantastic, fantastic teaching tool into, you know, getting the juices flowing in your brain. And right now we're in 2016, end of 2016 right now. And as far as I know, the only country in the world that has made chess mandatory in their school system and their curriculum is Armenia. And they did that in 2011, 2012. 
So in 2011, they ba basically passed a law saying that every school in Armenia, from elementary school, I believe, all the way to the end of high school, has to have chess as a mandatory course, as a mandatory activity in their education system, which is absolutely brilliant. And I don't know uh, any other countries that have done this or any other countries that have any board games um, as, uh, as a mandatory course in their school curriculum, right? Um, something at least some uh, that a centralized education system has done right which is basically introduce chess into their into their curriculum and you know Armenia happens to be a very small country I think there's you know three and a half million people in that country but it's a powerhouse when it comes to chess and it was a powerhouse before the 2011 law was passed in in, in the country as well I think they're ranked in the top 10 uh, in the world for uh, you know, grandmasters, ratio of grandmasters to, uh, you know, population. Actually, I think they're the highest when it comes to ratio of grandmasters to the population, and they're ranked as the top 10 in uh, championships that they win and world ranking of chess, which is an amazing place to be, um, right it's it's fantastic it says a lot about their education system and in, in large part right um, very much geared towards uh, pattern recognition and mathematics and uh, and challenging the challenging the mind right um, so that's it that's sort of my uh, chessboard and this is seriously these let me take a look at this one take a look at the pattern for the pawn here right beautiful and the pattern for the knight here absolutely love it absolutely love it so i'll try to set this up somewhere um in the house here uh, we're set up permanently where we can sit down and play chess uh, Time to send out some messages to see who's who's into playing some chess. Right. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I thought you would enjoy. Uh, I promised to show it to you, and I really didn't want to take a look at it again. Pull it out of the box and find a you know new home for it here. Right. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.